Hey guys, so I did film um, a video, but I'm just gonna just redo it because um, a lot has happened since I've filmed. So um, I don't know if you can hear in my voice, but I have been violently sick for five days since last Tuesday. Um, ow. It has not been a fun journey. So I came down with a concoction of symptoms very quickly um, so if you can't hear me very well I'll try to manipulate the volume because this is as loud as I can talk right now um, so Monday I was driving to work with my mom and I felt something on the right side of my throat and I coughed and I thought I'd I thought I had something lodged and I coughed and it um, moved but my throat was still kind of sore because I figured well whatever is in there is irritating whatever so you know anyways um Tuesday is when it hit me my body has never reacted to anything like this before um so bear with me um but before I continue I did post a new up, um life update video if you want to go see it, it um it's not just literally the first video I'll try to remember to link everything down below but um We'll see. If not, I'll link it later. Uh, you just go to my channel and you'll see it. it's the first video. So, um, Tuesday I broke out with body chills, fever, I was dizzy, my eyes hurt, my head hurt, my throat was on fire, which is important to the story. And then um, my chest was kind of hurting and my neck was swollen. And um, trying to think of everything I did, had went through. Um, I think that was most of the symptoms. I would get hot, I would get cold, like it was insane. I had a mild temperature, um, but I could still smell and I could still taste. So I knew it, most likely it wasn't COVID. Um, but I was in so much pain, guys. My hips hurt because I was laying in bed. Um, but laying down, there was so much pressure on my neck that it was unbearable. I did everything I could. Wednesday, it, I just couldn't take it. I couldn't swallow anything. It was like a razor blade stuck right here. Knives pointing up, like it was insane. So I called the clinic and I was like, hey, I'm dying. Like not literally, but I cannot function. I can't concentrate. I can't, I just, I can't do it. Um, so they took it, my dad took me to the clinic to get swabbed for COVID strep and uh, the flu, which I knew I had none of. But the only thing I could probably think of was strep. That was the only one, but none, neither anything else. So I waited two hours, called back, everything came back negative. So they sent the cultures to the PCR testing unit, um, which well, I won't get till Monday, which is no longer needed. But anyways, um, so I'm like, well, I'll have to wait five days because it's now Wednesday. You won't send it till Thursday and nothing happens during the weekend. So I'll have to wait till Monday. You know, when I say I tried everything, I tried everything, honey. I tried um, drinking hot beverages. It did help, but it, it only lasted a few, like a few minutes after I did it. Like it didn't do anything. I gargled salt water, took hot baths for my other symptoms, but my main problem was here so once the I took Theraflu for the body aches and the body pains and all that that seemed to have worked and then I kept taking time on ibuprofen for any other swelling because my body just hurt but my neck was not affected by the ibuprofen it didn't do anything so I was like okay this is not okay um so I waited Thursday and Friday I did everything I could to make this pain go away. This is worse than dental pain. This is worse than eye pain. This was something I've never experienced before. And I've obviously, we've all had sore throats. Now, when you find out what my diagnosis is, you will fully understand why I was in so much pain. And if you've had this before, you will also understand why it's so painful. Um, the problem with this is I am a Spanish translator 
That's my, my job. I couldn't speak. I couldn't swallow. I, I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. I could not fucking function, y'all. It was insane. I couldn't do it. So, um, this morning, which is now Saturday, what, the 21st? Um, at 3 in the morning this morning, I told my mom, I said, I can't do this. Something's not right. My neck is super swollen. I need to go to the ER. Something's not right. I'm in a lot of pain. I can't do this anymore. So I come get downstairs, come get ready, get basics, throw everything on, put my hair up. And um, so the most important symptom that I had was my lymph node has been protruding through my neck for the last three days. I've never had that. Even when I was very sick the year before this and last year, I never had lymph node issues. My lymph nodes were protruding probably like this. Like it, you, you didn't even have to hardly touch. You could actually see it bulging from my throat. I'm like, okay, something's telling me this isn't right. So I go to the ER and I, the doctor on call on Wednesday was the doctor on call today, which in hindsight was a good thing. Um, so I was telling her everything. I was like, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I cannot function. I can't think straight. I can't do anything. Please make this go away. And then can we, you know, do tests and stuff? She's like, okay. So she gave me a shot. <sighs> Instantly I felt better because the pressures, there's pressure there, but the major, major pressure I had is gone. The swelling I had is, has subsided like 85%. Um, and I could actually swallow water without it burning or feeling like I'm gargling nails. Um, so that's really good because y'all, it was horrible. So they took a bunch of blood work. I still have my IV in, which I'll get to in a minute. So I had um, I had mono, flu, COVID, and strep tested, which we won't get those back till next week and then um, which I don't have it I do have my diagnosis and then I had a CT done because it's my throat and it's dealing with lymph nodes we have to make sure there's no blockages and all that stuff so we did that I do not like contrast if you've ever had this done you understand I do not like it I had it done in Denver uh, I don't like it it's a really weird feeling because I could see the through my veins and my eyes I'm very claustrophobic, so CT scans are not my thing. Um, now, if it's the lower part of my body, I'm fine. It's the head. I can't, and that's where I had to have it done. I had to do it twice because I was wearing a sports bra, and I didn't realize that the hooks were metal. I thought they were plastic for some reason, so we had to do it again. And um, when the contrast went in, I, oh, I hate the feeling of contrast. Anyway, sorry, I'm just trying to... So then, um, went back to the room, and then I, um, was sleeping because I could actually sleep. I wasn't in so much pain, so they let me sleep for a good two hours because I was, ex like, I was exhausted, y'all. I haven't, I hadn't sleep at the three... I did not sleep for three days. I had a mini stroke there. Um, I just couldn't do it. And so they let me sleep, and then she finally came in. She goes, so here's the thing. Um, you have tonsillitis. I've had tonsillitis when I was in high school, but it wasn't this bad. I had pan not pancreatitis. I had, yeah, was it pancreatitis? Anyway, I had another itis when I was in, when I, I had this in high school, and then I had another attack on one other organ. And that was more, this was more painful. So she goes, that's why. She goes, the only thing we're not sure on is why your lymph nodes are in overactive mode. She goes, they are in hyperdrive. And we don't know why. That's why they're protruding. Because this one wasn't as bad. It was this one that was the worst. I'm like, well, I sleep on this side. So apparently there's more pressure being put on it. And that's why it's sore. But that does explain the inflammation. She goes, yes, that's why. Um, because you have tonsillitis and it's a bad case of tonsillitis. <laughs> like, 
As she looked in my mouth and it was painful to open, I couldn't yawn. It was, it was bad. And on top of that, I'm on my period, so everything's already as sensitive. I get the whole thing. Um, so I uh, was like, okay, so what's the game plan? So I have two liquid rounds of antibiotic steroids. I did one today, I do one tomorrow. And then I'll get oral medication Monday to finish the 10-day antibiotic trail. And then I'll have steroids um, for the tonsils and something else. It's not the lymph node, but I don't remember what it's for. Um, and she said that the lymph nodes did what they were supposed to do, but they don't know why it had it was so small. I mean, I'm, now I'm telling you, it looked like I had a little bump right here. The lymph node was protruding that far like it was so sensitive I told her I was like I knew something was wrong when my lymph nodes were that swollen because that's never happened before and I can get pretty sick so we're going to talk about my immune system as well because it's pretty low um which is weird because I take vitamin c like anyways it doesn't matter so I told her I was like well I take a I take vitamin c um which they they asked why I had spikes in certain vitamins. I said, because that's what I'm taking, because I have thought it would help with something. Um, so I just I did everything, everything. I went and just everything because I was in so much pain, like nothing was relieving it. Um, and she was like, was well, a good thing you did come in because if it would have waited two more days, you would have not been able to breathe. Like, well, I can barely do that now. It's still, oh, another thing is I have a lot of fluid in the ears. This side's worse. This side is not. Or this side had more fluid, but this side was more painful. And that's when I said that's because I sleep on the right side. Um, so I have a fluid in both ears. It's not infected. I just have fluid. And um, I have tonsillitis. And so I will get this removed tomorrow. <sighs> Y'all. I was so sick. I was so sick. Um, so I'm thinking about if I want to have the tonsils removed. Because this side's still sore. Um, even when I swallow, it's still pretty tender. Um, I'm just checking. Yeah, that's this side. Um, it's not irritating. It's not unbearable. It's not painful. It's just uncomfortable. But it's a thousand degrees turn from where I was during this morning through this morning because I had taken some Tylenol flu and severe flu and cold and that usually knocks anything out I have. Um, it did nothing. I had to take a Tramadol because I have back issues or back injury and for my wrist uh, with my tendonitis and it did nothing and that stuff knocks me out. I was slept 30 minutes. And I just could like, I couldn't do it anymore. And so I went and woke up my family. I'm like, hey, so I got to go to the ER. Uh, I'm going to go grab my insurance and stuff and let's go because I can't do this. And usually I have a pretty high pain tolerance and I hate hospitals. But I was in so much pain, guys. Like, if you've ever had tonsillitis, a severe case of tonsillitis, you will understand this was not mild. Um, mild would have been had I been seen on Tuesday. Wednesday um, but you know they are short-staffed there's only so much that they can do so I will give them that but I was treated very well at this hospital well, I used to work there but I was treated very well um, she did every test she could think of and the CT and the um, oh, I had a urine test done too to make sure I wasn't pregnant and <laughs> surprise I'm not pregnant um, plus I'm on my, I mean, that's not a, always an indication that I am on my period, so, um, but they did a urine test, they did swabs, we did a CT, antibiotics have been pumped, like, oh, like tonight's the first night I ate a full hot meal in four days, because of the pain. I can handle pain everywhere else except teeth, ears, and my tonsils. That I will become a baby because it's so painful. But my neck was so swollen. 
So the swelling I have now, it will go down, but you can kind of see my jawline. Couldn't see that 24 hours ago. All of this was like kind of swollen over. I had so much fluid in my neck and I could feel it because every time I laid down, I put pressure on it. And every time I moved forward, there was pressure. Um, so yeah, I either get influenza or I have some really bad sinus issues. Like living in Kansas is no joke. I'm from here. I was born and raised here, but I always have medical issues. Um, so I, since I am a translator, um, if my throat starts to get sore, I'll have to use my actual physical translator and let them know that I'm still recovering. So talking is not going to, um, because when I speak Spanish, it does hurt my neck, my throat more because I go higher in pitch, which hurts. I can't do that. So, um, I am going back to work on Monday, but. I've never been in so much pain like that before. Um, like, I do have pressure in my chest, but we've checked everything. Everything's clear. Everything came back negative. My white blood cell count is perfect. I don't, my blood sugar was fine. Um, I did have the blood sugar checked because my parents are both diabetic. Um, and I'm trying to keep that not to happen. Um, so I have some stuff I need to start figuring out because I don't want to go through this again. Like I don't. So, um, I was going to do a cleaning with me video, but I have been in bed for four days and I've been severely ill. Um, and that is why. Like this, I still hurts to swallow. And I'm paranoid to swallow because that's what I, like I hated to I hated doing it, um, but your body naturally does it, so you can't control it. And when you do try to control it, you put more stress. So I've had to learn to just prepare the throat and then swallow, like you just saw. I did, ugh, it's a mess. So tomorrow I go in with my final IV round of antibiotic and steroid. I'll get the others on Monday. Um... What I'm dealing with right here, right now, I would rather deal with than anything that I had to over the last four days. I had a lot of people reach out to me um, in my pre my personal personal life, if you will, which I appreciate. So thank you. I've tried to keep everybody updated that I know Nate wanted to be updated, but this is as loud as I can talk. So tomorrow, after the IV is taken out, and I do finish with that. I am going to come home and I will film the cleaning with me video because I do feel a lot better. I just want a really nice rest, good night's rest, since I haven't slept in three, four days. Um, that's the first thing I did when I came home at like eight o'clock. I was there for almost five hours. Came home and slept. Y'all, I was so tired. I ate some a very light breakfast to introduce food back into my system and then have lunch oh yeah I had a piece of toast for lunch and then we had dinner so I feel a lot better um, but I just want a really nice tw eight hours sleep to prepare for my work week and I'm gonna do my cleaning video tomorrow so this will go up before that um, so listen to your body and be an advocate for yourself because I the pro had the provider not been on call, it would have gotten ugly because I don't like how I was treated on Wednesday. And it necessarily wasn't her, it was her staff. So if you're a receptionist, a nurse, yes, as patients, we need to respect medical staff. There's a huge nationwide shortage. And I understand that and I get that and I respect y'all tremendously. Words matter when you're telling somebody who's as sick as I was Words matter and tone matters. So I told her what happened. She took care of it and it's fine, but it wasn't on Wednesday. And I get very irritated when I'm sick very quickly. And that did not help me because um, I was pissed. 
at what I was told. So, I respect the hell out of you guys, but the tone and words matter in patient bedside manner or in patient care. It matters. Um, I have witnessed way too many poorly worded sentences and it creates chaos because you're dealing with medical. You're dealing with life regardless of how minor the diagnosis is. It matters. So if you're in medical, whether you're a receptionist, whether you are a nurse, whether you're a medical assistant, it matters. Please be compassionate with your patients because that goes a long way. Um, so I'm actually going to edit this video tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. I'm going to rest my voice, rest my throat. Like I said, I'm a translator for Spanish students, so I gotta rest my voice for Monday because I'm gonna get all sorts of questions. And like I said, I, sp I go out, I go higher when I speak Spanish, so. But I'm okay. Um, I'm good now. Um, just listen to your body. You're your own advocate. And if you know something's wrong, something's wrong, fight for it. And I've had doing that with somebody else in my family too. It's important to listen to your body because you're the one dealing with it and you're the one having to figure out how to make it better and how to make the pain go away. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm very tired. Um and I just wanted to hop on here and say I'm good. Um and that will be the cleaning video, and then I have a couple more videos I want to do, but I need my my throat to heal before I can talk that long. I mean, it hurts talking 22 minutes. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna go to bed. I just wanted to film this video in the moment. Like I said, I get this taken off tomorrow, which will be the 22nd of January. Which is already a hard day, but we're not going to let anything ruin my day once I get the IV and the zap, so if I'm going to feel a little spacey in this video, this is why. So I'm going to go ahead and I will talk to you guys later. There probably will be a second updated video or I'll just insert it in the vlog or the cleaning video. So. Catch you later. Bye guys.